So Brad, I know this is a really important work that you're doing out there in the world. And I also know that many people are familiar with EFT or tapping, but many are not. It's kind of a new area for a lot of people too. So I wonder if you can just start by kind of just introducing us to this idea of EFT and tapping and then talking a little bit about how it works and what it can do for people and that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So EFT, which is short for emotional freedom techniques, uh, and we also, a lot of us just call it tapping because it is a process where we are literally tapping with our fingertips, primarily on places on our face and torso. And if you're new to this, don't stop watching right now. <laughs> I know it sounds a little strange, but there's a really good reason why we do this. It is one of the quickest, most effective forms of stress relief you're going to find. It's simple. You can do it at any time and it dramatically lowers stress. And when you consider that most, if not all of the issues that trouble us physically and emotionally are either caused by or worsened by stress, then you can understand why having a tool like EFT is so effective and can be effective in so many different areas. It was originally uh, discovered based on acupuncture. So for thousands of years in Chinese medicine, they've said there's this flow of energy along these pathways called meridians. And when this energy is flowing naturally, we experience our natural state of health and well-being, physically and emotionally. And when it gets stuck, we don't feel so good. And when we don't feel good, we don't think as clearly, we don't make the best decisions. And that has unfortunate consequences for our lives. So in traditional acupuncture, the doctor would stick needles in these key points, and we're just using our fingertips to tap them to rebalance the energy. And as I said, this has been used in Eastern medicine for thousands of years. We have modern research validating this. We have studies showing that cortisol, one of the stress hormones, is dramatically lowered in the body. When we're doing the tapping, we have fMRI studies showing the changes in brain activity. So even though many of us are doing this and saying, yes, I just feel that it works, I can see the changes happen in my life. For those of you who are uh, data geeks, <laughs> the, the, there's a growing body of, of research showing that, yeah, it's not just self-reported. Uh, self there are actual physical things going on in the body. And then in different areas of our lives where we're, there's a part of this that wants to keep things the same, even if we don't love the way our lives are, mm -hmm. including our relationships, <laughs> There's a part of us that says, yes, but this is safer. And so when we try to make changes, when we try to say hi to an attractive stranger, there's a stress response that happens in the body and shuts us down. And so the tapping helps to calm that stress down and helps us look at those fears and the beliefs behind that stress and then start to change our minds, start to see oh, you know what? It might actually be okay for me to be in a relationship. It might actually be okay for me to be healthier, happier, wealthier, and all these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this, this EFT can actually help us reduce stress, if I'm hearing you correctly, reduce stress, lower co cortisol, uh, manage perhaps false or limiting beliefs, and yeah, help yeah. us with emotional upsets or challenges or things that we may have going on. And I think some of the tricky part about some of this, Brad, is well, some of this is, well, a lot of this goes on underneath the surface, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so many things go on under the surface, including most of our choices. Mm. The, the, the life choices that we're making are so unconscious that we're not even consciously aware of some of the things we're doing. It's it's like there's a chess grandmaster inside our head who's thinking 50 moves ahead. So in terms of relationships, you, you might be in the grocery store and you're thinking, you know, I'd really like to meet somebody. And then at some level, under the, out of the corner of your eye, you catch a glimpse of some attractive stranger. And part of you is now thinking, you know, Queen's Pawn to uh, <laughs> Rook Five. And we're, we're moving ahead and thinking, I could go up to that person and say hi. And they might say hi back. And we might strike up a conversation. We might find that we have some things in common. We might go out on a date. And that date might lead to another date and a third date. And we might move in together and get married. And they'd break my heart just like the last person. Oh, look, there's a sale in aisle two. And we are <laughs> down in aisle two before we're even consciously aware of any of this happening. And we're looking at things going, gosh, I wish I could meet somebody. <laughs> so 
it's that stress stuff. So we can tap on the stress when we're aware of it. We can say, oh my, I'm having an upset. I'm having, I'm feeling, you know, fear. I'm feeling sadness. I'm feeling anger. There's some uncomfortable emotion I'm experiencing in my body. And the tapping down regulates that emotional experience. And then it gives us the freedom to reconsider the thoughts that are going on behind that. So we can tap in the moment we're experiencing that upset, or we can be tapping at other times and thinking about, okay, let me think back to why I'm afraid of being in a relationship. What are the things that have happened? You know, this person broke my heart and that means I'm not lovable. No, 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 no. As, as, so that's what part of this says in order to keep us safe. If I can believe I'm unlovable, then I won't go and do something stupid, like get into another relationship and get hurt again. But the tapping calms down that response such that we can say, you know what? <laughs> I really didn't like that person that much anyway, <laughs> and I wasn't making good choices. And that person did me a favor and I wasn't taking care of myself. It's like one of those things that I call a pink slip from God. <laughs> you know, when, when we're not doing what we need to do to get out of a situation that's not right for us. And so fate moves in. <laughs> And says, look, you're not making the right choice for you here. So we're going to remove this choice for you. Mm. And, uh, but then part of it says, well, I'm going to use this as a reason. I'm going to misunderstand this and see this as meaning something that it doesn't mean. Mm -hmm. You know, all this means is that wasn't the right person for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that pink slip from God idea. That's really powerful. Yeah, I came up with that when I got fired from a job that uh, I shouldn't, that I was not happy in and I wasn't doing anything about it. <laughs> and then I was fired under very, un, you know, mysterious circumstances. Like, wait a minute, that's just not true. And it's like, oh, it took me a while. I didn't, I didn't understand right then and there. <laughs> I was pretty upset about being unemployed. But it, then shortly after, it's like, oh, I see what happened. Hmm. And I'm very grateful now. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting how that can happen in life and it can often happen in relationships where we have an attraction to someone or we think this could be the relationship, but maybe it's a struggle or maybe there's something we didn't see initially when in the middle of it. And then we kind of got that pink slip on that relationship. But unfortunately, then sometimes we form these limiting or false beliefs about ourselves, like you said, about us being unlovable or that all men are going to hurt me or that I'm going to be rejected if I get into a relationship. And that's where it gets tricky. Yeah. And it's all brilliant. It's, it's designed to keep us safe. That's what our mind is trying to do is trying to keep us safe. And it's saying, what can I come up with? And it may be based on all kinds of things. So if, if things have happened in my childhood that suggest that I'm not lovable, whether a parent in a bad, in a, in a really bad mood said something awful like that, or I, or it was just my interpretation of things. And then, so I go into a relationship and the person breaks up with me. It's like, well, there it is again, further proof that I'm not lovable. It's like, no, it doesn't prove it at all. It's, and, you know, so it's loving that, allowing ourselves to be compassionate with ourselves for the ways we've tried to keep ourselves safe and then looking at it. And I like to say that re rejection is just redirection. It's just someone saying, look, you're, you're looking for something here that, and this isn't what, what you're looking for. It's like going into the butcher shop and saying, I'm looking, I want a loaf of bread. And the butcher says, what? <laughs> you, you're, this is the wrong place. And then thinking, oh, I guess I'm just not good enough. He'd, he'd, give, he'd give bread to somebody else. But, you know, I'm just the sort of person who doesn't get what I want. It's like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're just the wrong person for what you're looking for. But we say that it's, you know, but we, we take on that belief because then it feels safer. It's like, oh, if I can believe that I'm not good enough, then I won't make the mistake of going into shops and asking for what I want. And I'll just settle for what, what shows up. And, and allowing ourselves to be compassionate with ourselves for trying to protect ourselves in that way. And then deciding, you know what, I deserve better than that <laughs> because right. you do. Right, right. So does this EFT and tapping work if we 
can't identify what's going on. Like for a lot of people, like we've already talked about, this is more of an unconscious thing and we don't necessarily know exactly what the limiting beliefs are. Maybe we know some of them, but maybe we even sense there's more. And right. we find ourselves responding or reacting in ways that we don't even fully understand. Does this work if you can't identify like if you can't say, I don't know what it is, but I sense there's some kind of block here. Right. And so we can start with whatever is there. So if I'm sensing some kind of block, I may not know what the belief is behind that. I may be aware of a physical sensation. It's like, oh, you know what? I just get this sort of tightness in my chest as I think about it. And it's like, great. great. Okay. We would then tap on, even though I have this tightness in my chest and there's a part of us that doesn't want us to know, you know, that that chess grandmaster isn't going to say, well, you know, it was that fifth move with your bishop that was the problem. Right. Because because it's saying, if I let you know what that is, you might decide to do something about that and put us into another tricky situation. So there's nothing here. Just, no, don't pay attention. Just go over and look at that sail on aisle two. And so because there's that that stress response that dist distracts us even if it's very subtle you know we're most of us go around with ambient stress we we just have a little bit of stress that we're not aware of especially because most of us are carrying a device that constantly says hey here's something else to be upset about <laughs> so or we're not even to be aware. afraid of yeah there's always something that, that this level of stress. So even without saying any words, without identifying anything, I, I recommend tapping on a daily basis. To me, it's energy hygiene. It's like you brush your teeth and you take a shower. You know, you don't sit there and look at your teeth and go, is there anything green growing between my teeth? No. Okay. I don't need to brush my teeth. <laughs> we, we do it as maintenance. We do it as upkeep. I recommend tapping on a daily basis just as, as energy upkeep. Uh, and, if you want to say things, you can say prayers, you can say affirmations. So you're, you're always getting back to a, a healthier place. And then as we're tapping, it feels safer to see things. So as we lower that stress response, that part of us that says, oh, you can't look here. It's like, well, maybe it is safe to look here. So we start to peel the layers of the onion. So we might be tapping, oh, I've got this tightness in my chest, this tightness in my chest. This Oh, I know what this is about. This is about that breakup that I had my sophomore year of college. And I never, oh, okay, that breakup my sophomore year of college. And so we start to get more and more clear. And we might start to remember aspects that we hadn't been clear. It's like, oh, and I remember it was, it was a week before Christmas. And that just made it so much worse. And, and all those things that made it upsetting. And we start to clear out. It's like, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't spend Christmas with that jerk. <laughs> right. We can even come to a place of, of awareness and gratitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, you reminded me when you were talking about that of a client I had a few years back, Brad, who she was in her 60s at the time that I was working with her. And she had this really strong belief that men would reject her. And as we traced that back, she traced it back clear back to junior high when she had asked this boy to a Sadie Hawkins girl's choice dance. And he had not only turned her down, but kind of like made fun of her publicly in the school asking him. And so she had formed a belief based on that experience that she had in junior high that was still with her in her 60s, that all men would reject and embarrass and hurt her. Yes. Yeah. Because some, some guy going through adolescence and dealing with his own insecurities uh, and, you know, made a, made a horrible choice and is not representative of all people and certainly not representative of people who have matured from that point. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry that human beings can be boneheads at times, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but it's some people, you know, we get this belief of all people, all men will reject me or all women will reject me or whoever it might be. I, uh, you know, all, all employers are going to turn me down all whatever. And it's like, no, just the wrong ones will. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's, it's allowed yourself to go, oh, I'm so glad I didn't spend the Sadie Hawkins dance with that jerk. Right. 
Right. And so can this EFT also help us with like forgiving from something like that, like even seeing the innocence, maybe it was that he was going through a very hard time in his own life and was an adolescent insecure boy in his own ways. Yeah. I mean, can it help us to release and forgive in that way? It, it absolutely can. It's a great tool for forgiveness. And the key thing is forgiveness isn't for that jerk in junior high. Forgiveness is for ourselves. Whether, whether they deserve it or not, it's not a matter because we have all this stuff about, well, you should forgive and this obligation. It's like, well, it's a moral, it, it, you know, you're a strong moral person if you can forgive this person, even if they're undeserving of it. It's like, yeah, to heck with them. Forgiveness is I'm not holding on to this pain anymore. <laughs> you not You don't get to beat me up in my head anymore. I'm not giving you free rent in my head anymore. I'm evicting you. So you can you can kick them out with love. <laughs> That's fine. You can make it a, a loving gesture towards the other person. But if you're if you're not feeling like that, it's like, you know, that person really was a jerk. They don't deserve forgiveness. But I deserve forgiveness. I deserve to be free from that and not let that person bother me anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's too bad that I didn't, gosh, if only I'd known tapping in junior high. <laughs> so I could have been tapping that day and go. What a jerk. I'm so glad I'm not going to the dance with him. <laughs> right. Right. And the right people are out there for me. Right. So um, for people that are novices with this, you know, that this is a, a new frontier, if you will, what's the best way to kind of like dip our toe in the water? I know you and I are going to do some tapping here in a few Absolutely. minutes to introduce people. But above and beyond that, if people are really interested or intrigued, I know you have these videos on YouTube. Your YouTube channel is Brad Yates. It's just under your name. Is that correct? Or yeah, you put in Brad Yates or tap with Brad. And uh, and it's it became obvious how long ago it was since we last talked, Michelle, because in the, in the bio you had it said 200 videos and there's over a thousand now. Oh, OK, yeah, <laughs> this is what they said. This is what they sent me. <laughs> right. That's well, it, I, I'm thinking this. It's like, oh, yeah, things have changed since we last talked. Yeah, I think it's been like five years. So you've yeah. probably put out a lot of videos. I have been busy. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got over a thousand, there's a lot there. Yeah. So there's a lot of resources for folks as we go through the process. Uh, some people will sometimes say, oh, you have to say all these things. I won't know what to say. So I can't do EFT. No, you can tap silently. Uh, you can, as I said, you can say prayers or affirmations. Uh, you can just say the, the basic version of EFT is we just say the same thing over and over. This stress, this stress, this stress, or this fear, whatever it might be that we're feeling, this tightness in my chest, this tightness in my chest. And then if you want to explore with the words, that's what I make the videos for is so that you don't have to come up with the words. I'm doing that for you. And then as you're tapping along and you feel like, no, what I really want to say is this, go for it. This is just, it's just a gateway for you to then start to come up with your own words and get more comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. and, and then there's more advanced ways of working with me in groups and privately. Right. So this kind of reminds me almost of like guided meditations. Like if you have a hard time with meditation silently or on your own, you can experiment with guided meditations. This is similar, I, I'm, I'm guessing. Absolutely. Similar. If you have a hard time staying focused or knowing what to say or what to do, the videos can be a guide or a gateway for that. Right. To make it as easy as possible to get the benefit of this tool. So people don't have to have necessarily professional training like you have around this. They can, if they'd like to, explore working with you further. But if they don't necessarily have to have that to get a lot of benefit from it, right? No prerequisites required. Okay, good. Well, I think this is a great introduction and thank you for answering all those questions because I just know for myself and for other people that may not be as familiar or haven't done it as much, um, it's really good to just kind of have a basic understanding of what it is and what it can do and how it can help. So are we ready to do our tapping? Oh, by all wow. means, let's do it. All right. So I'm going to so follow your lead. Excellent. So real quick, I'll just show folks the, the points we're going to tap. So we're going to start with the fingertips of our index middle finger on our dominant, dominant hand. hand. Okay. And tap on the side of your non-dominant hand. Now the meridians run up and down both sides of the body. So you can tap either side. You can switch back and forth. You can tap both sides at the same time. 
but uh, we'll start by tapping on the side of the hand. And that's where we do the setup, where we say, even though I have this issue, I choose to love and accept myself. And we'll say that three times. Then we'll tap the eyebrow point and say, whatever the issue is, on the side of the eye. And we're tapping these points usually around five to 10 times. It, it might be longer depending on what we're saying. Then under the middle of your eye and under your nose, under your lower lip, just above your chin. And right here where your collarbones just about come together, there's a little bit of a U shape at the base of your throat. You can use all of your fingertips there or even make a fist and tap. Next point is about four inches below the armpit right about bra strap level. And finally, the top of the head. So using all, using all of your fingertips, just tap it around the crown of your head. And then you take a deep breath. And then you check in again and say, okay, so if the stress was at an eight out of 10, what does it feel like now? Some For some folks, it'll go from an eight to a zero like that. It may go from an eight to a 7.75. It's like, okay, there's more things coming up. And, I, and as I said, it's like peeling layers of the onion. So you might get ideas about, oh, I know what it is. It's, uh, it's, it's about that report that I've got due. So now I can talk about this report that I, that I have due. And as I'm tapping along and the layers are being peeled, I might go, oh, it's not even this report. It's that test that I failed in the fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we start to get clear of things that have been limiting us for decades. Yeah. And are these touch points, these tapping points that we're doing on the body, do each one of them play a certain role or is it just kind of connecting, like you said, these energetic meridians? What, what are the, what's the significance of these tapping points? Yeah. So these are key points that along the different meridians that have been used in acupuncture for okay. thousands of years. And each meridian is generally associated with an organ in the body, which is associated with different emotions. So for instance, a lot of people like to use the uh, under the eye point, which is associated with the stomach, which is associated with fear. Side of the eye is associated with the gallbladder meridian, which is associated with anger. So the original version of tapping uh, Callahan technique or thought field therapy developed by Dr. Roger Callahan, he would use just a couple of points in different algorithms, depending on what was going on for the person. And then one of his first students, Gary Craig, uh, who had a degree in engineering from Stanford, thinking like an engineer said, how do we simplify this? And there's eight points that we're tapping. Why don't we just tap all of the points in a row and just cover all the bases rather than taking all that time trying to figure out which points to tap and found that he was getting the same great results. So that's why we do this uh, simplified version top to bottom. Got it. Got it. Well, thank you for that. Yep. Great question. So now, now we'll have some fun with the tapping. So let's, uh, let's do this. Close your eyes, take a deep breath. And one of the things that stops us so often, one of the beliefs that we pick up from so many unfortunate events in our lives is that we're not good enough. We're not worthy of love. We're not worthy of whatever we might want. So with your eyes closed, and just maybe imagining a full length mirror and looking in that mirror and say, I'm lovable. I'm lovable. I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy of love. And just let that rattle around inside. And just notice on a scale of zero to 10, how true that feels. And don't judge yourself harshly if the number is lower than you'd like it to be. Just allow yourself to be aware of what might be there because you may be making a lot of decisions based on this misunderstanding that you're not absolutely lovable. I'm going to try to clear up that uh, misunderstanding. Whatever misunderstandings might be there about that, let's do some tapping to clear that up. So go ahead and open your eyes. Allow yourself to be... Uh, aware of whatever was going on inside as you thought about that. Even though I sometimes doubt how lovable I am. Even though I sometimes doubt how lovable I am. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Even though I sometimes doubt how lovable I am. Even though I sometimes doubt how lovable I am. I choose to love and honor myself anyway. I choose to love and honor myself anyway. 
even though I sometimes doubt how lovable I am. Even though I sometimes doubt how lovable I am. Because things have happened in my life. Because things have happened in my life. And people have said things. And people have said things. That have suggested that I'm not entirely lovable. Have suggested that I'm not entirely lovable. And even though I have doubts about how lovable I am. And even though I have doubts about how lovable I am. I choose to deeply and completely. I choose to deeply and completely. Love, honor, and accept myself. Love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else involved in this. And maybe anyone else involved in this. Because I choose to be that free. Because I choose to be that free. All these doubts about how lovable I am. All these doubts about how lovable I am. All these old doubts about how lovable I am. All these old doubts about how lovable I am. All of these thoughts. All of these thoughts. About why I couldn't or shouldn't have more love in my life. About why I couldn't or shouldn't have more love in my life. All these doubts. All these doubts. About how awesome I am. About how awesome I am. And how people can't see the awesomeness. And how people can't see the awesomeness. Because it's just not there. Because it's just not there. Even though part of me knows. Even though part of me knows. Deep down inside. Deep down inside. I am freaking awesome. I am freaking awesome. <laughs> and absolutely lovable. And absolutely lovable. I am a magnificent child of the universe. I am a magnificent child of the universe. Worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. Worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. And worthy and deserving of love. And worthy and deserving of love. And part of me might be saying. And part of me might be saying. Who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? Remember these times in your life? Remember these times in your life? Where you screwed up? Or you screwed up. Or someone said you weren't lovable. Or someone said you weren't lovable. That had to be the truth, right? That had to be the truth, right? They couldn't have been lying. They couldn't have been lying. And I love and appreciate those parts of me. And I love and appreciate those parts of me. That hold on to thoughts like that. That hold on to thoughts like that. Because they're trying to protect me. Because they're trying to protect me. Because I've been hurt in the past. Because I've been hurt in the past. And part of me says. And part of me says. If I can believe that I'm unlovable. If I can believe that I'm unlovable. Then I will avoid painful situations. Then I will avoid painful situations. I choose to not beat myself up for that. I choose to not beat myself up for that. I choose to love and appreciate myself. I choose to love and appreciate myself. For all the ways I try to keep myself safe. For all the ways I try to keep myself safe. All the ways I tried to avoid the pain of rejection. All the ways I try to avoid the pain of rejection. And I'm allowing myself to know. And I'm allowing myself to know. Rejection is just redirection. Rejection is just redirection. Because I am worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. Because I am worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. And if someone rejects me. And if someone rejects me. They're just telling me they're not the best that I have, that they're not the best for me. They're just telling me that they're not the best for me. And I can say, oh, thank you for not letting me waste my time on you. And I can say, thank you for not letting me waste my time on you. And I can find something better. And I can find something better. Someone better for me. Someone better for me. And I'm clearing these old doubts. And I'm clearing these old doubts. I'm allowing myself to know. I'm allowing myself to know. That it's safe to acknowledge how lovable I am. That it's safe to acknowledge how lovable I am. And there, there may be some uncomfortable circumstances. And there may be some uncomfortable circumstances. And I choose to have faith in myself. And I choose to have faith in myself. That I can handle that. That I can handle that. Because I've handled every bad thing that's ever happened in my life. Because I've handled every bad thing that has ever happened in my life. Maybe not always as gracefully as I would have liked. 
maybe not always as gracefully as I would have liked. But I'm still here. But I'm still here. Which is proof that I handled it. Which is proof that I handled it. And I'll handle it even better in the future. And I'll handle it even better in the future. Because I won't misunderstand. Because I won't misunderstand. I won't believe that it means I'm unlovable. I won't believe that it means that I'm unlovable. Because I know that I am lovable. Because I know that I am lovable. And I am worthy of love in body, mind, and spirit. And I'm worthy of love in body, mind, and spirit. And take a deep breath. And close your eyes. And again, looking in a full length mirror and say, I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy of love. And rating that again on a scale of zero to 10. Hopefully that number has come up. And uh, you may also be aware as, as we're, we're tapping through, maybe peeling the layers of the onion and maybe some thoughts or memories might come up about, oh, well, there's this thing that happened. Or uh, you might say, well, but I did this horrible thing and that's why I'm unworthy of love. And then you can tap more directly on those memories to come up, even though I'm thinking I'm unlovable because of this thing that happened and tap on that memory. And you start to realize, you know what? I'm not unlovable because I did that thing. I did that thing because I was thinking I was unlovable. If I really acknowledge how lovable I am, I would never do something like that. <laughs> the kid in junior high who, who ridiculed your client, if he had high self-esteem, he could never have done something like that. He might've said, hey, you know what? I, I, don't, I, I don't really wanna go or something. Might've found a more graceful way to, to bow out. But the, the public ridicule, that's happy, healthy people don't do that. <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And I can just tell you, you know, I think I'm, I'm in a good place in my life. I'm not saying I always have been. I feel like I'm in a really good place in my life in terms of feeling my own worthiness and my own lovableness. But that felt really, really good. That felt really, really good. Like a really deep affirmation of that. I really felt that deeply in my body and my soul. It felt really, really good. Like I wouldn't have necessarily thought, Brad, just to be honest, that I needed that affirmation myself, mm -hmm. but turns out I did. <laughs> well, it, and it, it's great for me. And I, and I tap with people on things like this all the time, but there's a part of us that, that craves that reminder. And we don't always get it from the outside. And, and we're not taught to believe that, um, you know, that we should have that. And, you know, we're told it's a stressful world. It's a hard world. That's just the way it is. And to nurture ourselves, you know, it's like, you know, taking a, taking a nice long bath, you know, bubble bath, you know, you don't necessarily need it, but mm -hmm. it's really good for body, mind, and spirit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And I do think, you know, just being human and just living, we get messages from the world all the time that can kind of undermine that confidence even if you're generally a really confident or secure kind of person and you have done a lot of self-work and evolved to the point where maybe some of these things don't affect you maybe as much as they once did like in my case it's still it's still you know we still can take a beating out there in the world just by the sake of living just by day-to-day -day living and everything's energy and we're affected by that energy. And so we pick up on that negativity and we get messages from people. You know, we, we see people post things on social media that we know isn't true. And we're saying, how is it that this person believes this? But it's, up, it's upsetting us. You know, we, it, it's some, it may be a very slight thing, but there's a little part of us that feels a little stressed about that. Maybe just the thought of, wow, I'm, it scares me that there are people saying things like this. And so we have a little bit of stress. And so to do something that's nurturing for ourselves is, is so important. And, and why not say, I'm lovable, I'm lovable. Because the more we acknowledge that about ourselves, the more we share our most lovable self with other people, and the more we're able to see how lovable other people are, mm -hmm. even, even behind, uh, beyond their fears and their outward behavior, it's like, all right, I, I know there's a human being in there someplace. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm sending you love. And sometimes we got to send love to some people from a distance. But uh, 
you know, the more we can see the love, how lovable we are, the more we can see how lovable other people are. And that makes a huge difference. Yeah, well, and another thing I think that can happen with social media, because again, you know, for so many people, we're so connected to our phones or getting, you know, a lot of information or stimulation that way, feedback that way, is we can start comparing ourselves. If people are posting, you know, the glossy versions of their lives out there, I mean, like, I feel like I have a pretty good life, but I can sometimes look at social media posts of some people that are friends, you know, in my circle of friends, like on Facebook, and I can think, wow, everybody else's life is so much more exciting and so much better than mine, <laughs> right? Because they're posting like the glossy, highlighted version of their lives, and I might not be having my best day, and I'm kind of going, I have the worst life, <laughs> you know, I can yeah. be comparing in that way, right? Yeah. I have videos on comparison. Good. <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> because and, and here's the thing. You know, we can we can say, you know, I'm only seeing that fraction of their life. It's like, you know, the rest of their their house might be a total mess and mm-hmm. they're aiming the camera at the one part that's clean. So we try to comfort ourselves saying, well, you know what? They're just aiming the camera at the one clean corner of their house. And the rest of their house is a mess. That is not healthy for us to be thinking that way. I would love to say, you know what? I hope that their entire life is awesome and I'm window shopping. It's like, if it's available for them, it's available for me. Mm -hmm. And it's not a comparison. It's not like, oh, there's something better. It's like, oh, they're allowing themselves something that for some reason I'm not allowing myself. And rather than hoping that their life is is secretly as bad as mine is, it's like, I I need to take a page from their book and, uh, and, create my life to look like that as well and not pretend and not just shoot the picture of uh of the clean corner of my house and say see here here my life is awesome too but allowing myself to go what would really make my life awesome Mm -hmm. that's a beautiful reframe i like that a lot that's a really beautiful reframe what have you found to be some of the most um needed or popular topics from the videos you've put out on certain topics are there are there some that kind of rise to the top as being most common? Yeah, certainly the videos on things like anxiety and fear, mm-hmm. certainly over the last year. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, but in but in general, those are those are issues that uh, come up a lot. The issues around money. Mm-hmm. People love to talk about money because we have a lot of negative beliefs about money that are unconscious. So we we block ourselves. We consciously say we want money. But going back to the the person in the grocery store and the chess grandmaster and telling us to go go away, we do that with money as well. There are opportunities to make money, and the chess grandmaster says that's going to be bad. We don't want to be a rich, greedy person, or we don't want the IRS taking all our money, or we don't want our family asking for handouts. Oh, there's a sale in aisle two. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, and I'm and I'm fine with where I'm at financially. Yeah, even and if you- I know I'm not. <laughs> Right. You know, I want to ask you about this too, Brad. I'm just curious to hear what you have to say about this. In my work that I've been doing now for over a decade, I think there's a connection between the feeling worthy for love and feeling worthy for money. Like they seem to kind of coincide because many of the clients that I've worked with, as they grow in their feeling of worthiness in regards to love, that a lot of them, their financial situations have improved uh, simultaneously. Yes, yes. Deep inside, there's a part of us that knows that we're we're worthy of the best. Everyone right now, just notice that right now you are breathing. Every time you inhale, you are asking for something. You are making a request to the universe. And darned if the universe doesn't say, yes, you're worthy of this every single time. Now, here's a little experiment. Take a deep breath. You asked for more and what happened? I got more. Yeah, (laughs) I'm pretty sure that for most of the people who just did that experiment, it's like, you know, very few of you, the universe said, nope, nope. (laughs) Stopped you and stopped the breath halfway through and didn't allow you to have, and didn't give you all the oxygen you asked for. You can go outside at night and look up and see the stars the same as anybody else. And it's like, are you going to say, well, sure, I can see the stars, but, you know, that's no big deal. It's not what I really, that's not that awesome. What's more awesome? 
<laughs> the vast expanse of the universe that you can see. So these beliefs that I'm not worthy of love or, or money, I'm worthy of seeing the stars, but not these. I think it's like we start to allow ourselves to see, okay, that's just not true. It doesn't make sense. So we take on these beliefs about not being worthy as a, it's a misunderstanding that we then use to protect ourselves. So the way we use unworthiness to protect ourselves around love may be the same way we're protecting ourselves around money. So as we start to see, it is safe to see that I'm worthy of love. You know, I wonder how that works with money. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we start to have that same kind of opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. So interesting and uh, so powerful, really so powerful. So this is an amazing work that you're doing, Brad. And besides the YouTube channel, um, besides your website, which I believe, tell me if this is still up to date, is bradyates.net, right? <laughs> that up to date? It's a, no, it's tapwithbrad.com. Okay. And if, okay. You know, if, you, if you put in bradyates.net, it'll still take you there. But yeah, it's now, I've got, you know, I've gone through so many different web addresses over the years and people are always saying to me, oh, I tell all my friends, I tell my clients, tap with Brad, tap with Brad. And stuff. Well, that would be easy, wouldn't it? <laughs> so just <laughs> tapwithbrad.com. And it's tap with Brad on all the social media platforms. Well, thank you so much, Brad, for your generosity today. I think this is going to really help a lot of people. And I really appreciate the opportunity to feature you and your work again. Thank you so much. Uh, my pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.